Hello, in this video I'm going to explain everything you need to know in order to get started with Milky Way photography or astrophotography in general. I'm going to talk about cameras, lenses, where to go, when to go, what camera settings to use, etc. So without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, so this video will actually be divided into two parts because there's just so much information and the video that you're watching right now is part one. When the part two is done, I'm gonna link it up here so you can check it out. And here you can check out the chapters that I'm gonna be covering in this video. So if you wanna skip to any of that, the links with timestamps will be in the description box down below. So first thing that you need to have is obviously a camera. And you might ask what kind of camera do you need in order to capture the Milky Way? And it is pretty much any camera, but if you're planning on using a smartphone, actually I have sad news for you. Smartphones are no good for capturing the night sky. And that is simply because the sensors that smartphones have are very, very tiny and they capture a tiny fraction of the light that an APS-C or a full frame camera can capture. So the bigger the sensor, the more light hits the sensor and the better this kind of camera performs in low light, which is obviously the night if you're trying to shoot the stars. And the second reason why smartphones are not good enough is the lack of control when it comes to exposure. I mean, there are of course apps on the market that allow you to dial in the shutter speed and the ISO that you need, but some phones are very limiting when it comes to shutter speed. For instance, as far as I know, on the iPhones, the maximum shutter speed that you can set is one second, which is definitely, definitely too short for capturing a good high quality picture of the night sky. So you need to pick up some kind of camera and this can be a entry level DSLR or a mirrorless camera. It's best if it's an interchangeable lens system because you can advance later on and pick up a better lens to get better results. So the next thing that you need is obviously a lens and most cameras if you buy them and it's an interchangeable camera system, most of the time it comes with a so-called kit lens and this is the lens that comes with a box. It's not the best quality lens but it's a very versatile lens, typically it's a zoom lens with a variable aperture range and if you ask me do I need to buy another lens for astrophotography no absolutely not if you're just starting out definitely a kit lens will do but if you want to upgrade further along the one parameter that is the most important in lenses for astrophotography is the aperture because this determines the maximum size of the actual aperture that the light comes through and hits the sensor and the bigger the aperture the better this lens performs but it also is bigger more expensive etc etc so you can definitely start with a kit lens but if you want to advance later on if you have an APS-C camera for instance I can highly recommend the brand called Samyang in Europe or Rokinon in the US it's basically the same thing but they are branded differently in different parts of the world and they make fantastic lenses for instance I was using a Samyang 16mm f2.0 lens on my Canon 77D and this lens performs fantastically in capturing the night sky if you have a full frame camera, however, you can also see some Samyangs, but I can recommend the brand called Sigma. They make fantastic lenses, especially the Art Series lenses, 20 millimeters or something like this with very, very big apertures like f1.4 or something. And remember that the lower the f-stop number, the bigger the aperture actually is. So f1.4 is a bigger aperture than f2.0, for instance. And the final piece of gear that you absolutely need is some kind of a tripod, because we are going to be using shutter speeds uh, about 10, 20, maybe even 30 seconds. So definitely you need something steady to put your camera on. And here again, you don't need to invest in a super expensive tripod. I actually have a tripod that costed like 30 bucks. It looks like this, uh, but it's, it's, it's very sturdy. And for the price, it's an amazing value for money. And I've been using it for like three years and also for astrophotography, it performs fantastically. If you want to take landscape photographs, definitely even a cheap tripod will do. But then later on, if you want to advance and for instance, shoot some deep sky objects with a super telephoto lenses, you need something sturdier. But if you're just getting started, even a gorilla pod would do. And now that we have our gear, we need to actually decide where should we go to shoot the night sky and when should we go to do it. And when it comes to the location, 
If you are living in an urban area, I have bad news for you because there is a phenomenon called light pollution and it basically means that if you are in a city when there are a lot of street lights, a lot of, I don't know, commercials, etc. that are flashing lights in the night, they are actually polluting the night sky with this artificial light and if you are trying to capture stars, you are gonna capture this artificial light as well and it will literally pollute your images. So it's best to get away from the city drive i don't know i mean if you're living in a very urban area it might be hard for you you might even have to drive hundreds of kilometers in order to get away to a dark spot but it's really worth doing that because even though there are filters that you can thread on onto your lens that are supposed to cut off the light pollution or something still nothing beats just being in a remote location with a dark sky and in order to find out where such a location exists you need some kind of an app and I actually have an app that can do this and way more and I can highly recommend it. I actually have a separate video about it. It's called Planet for Photographers. I will link my review of this app right here if you want to check it out. But let's actually open this app and let's check out how it can help us find a location for shooting the night sky. Alright, so when I open up this app, right here at the top, when I scroll down from here, I can choose a different ephemeris mode which is called Dark Sky. And if I open this, I have a colorful map that shows with a colorful overlay the kind of uh, severity of the light pollution in the area I'm looking at. So obviously the redder it is, the worse it is, so the more light pollution it is. And I actually live in a city uh, right here and you can see that the entire city is just covered in red. And the outskirts of the city are a bit yellow and if you have watched one of my previous videos about editing Milky Way shots or removing light pollution I can show you an example when I shot this image on those videos and it was somewhere around here so it was in the green area so again it's definitely not perfect I could have found a better spot but in order to do that I would have to drive like 400 kilometers or something so I just chose this spot and it worked pretty well so you can use this map in order to navigate through your area and that's how you can find this out. Up here you can see that there is a scale called Brutal Scale and you can see what kind of level, what kind of class of, of the area you are in and what kind of area you are planning on shooting the Milky Way. And of course the better this class on the Brutal Scale the better results you will finally have. And the last thing that you need to do in order to prepare yourself for an astrophotography shot is actually to plan the best time. And it is kind of tricky because first you need to pick up a good time of year if you're planning to capture the Milky Way because if you're on the northern hemisphere, only in the summer months you can actually capture the Milky Way because only on those months the galactic center, which is obviously the most interesting part to uh, photograph, is above the horizon during the night. If you are trying to do this from the northern hemisphere in, for instance, January, the Milky Way will be actually below the horizon during the night and above the horizon during the day where you obviously cannot capture it on an image, right? And for the southern hemisphere, it's the opposite. So if you're on the southern hemisphere, then January is pretty much the best month to shoot the Milky Way. And in order to see how exactly the Milky Way is positioned on the sky, you can also use Planet for Photographers that I have right here. We just need to switch to a different mode. So again, scroll from here and we'll select Milky Way Center. And right here I can actually open the VR viewfinder mode which will sort of open the virtual reality when I can see the horizon and how every celestial body is located on the night sky which is super handy. So let's open that. And we can actually read that Milky Way Center is not visible throughout the night because we have selected 12th of January 2018 and like I said from the northern hemisphere where I live in January the Milky Way Center is not visible. So we can tap here to select a month and if we go to August let's say we can see this green line right here and this green line is our Milky Way so for instance here I can also pick a day and you can see day by day how the position of the Milky Way is changing at the same hour and assuming that you have already selected a appropriate part of the year you also need to pick an appropriate part of the month because Every month we have a lunar cycle and for instance if there's a full moon on the sky, on the night sky, it is so bright that it overpowers every stars that you might want to capture. So if there is full moon on the sky, there is no way you can capture the Milky Way. So you need to pick the right part of the month 
that for instance sometime around new moon so that the moon is not visible on the night sky during the night. And in order to find out the moon faces you can also use Planet for Photographers. So like I said I can highly recommend this app. You can see at the bottom here we actually have those little icons that show us the moon face and around 11th of August 2018 again for this example we have a new moon so this is like the best night to shoot the night sky and if we change this to our we can see how the Milky Way actually changes its position so you can see that for instance here at about uh, half past 10 it's a pretty good composition where the Milky Way center is right above the horizon we can see we have Mars here Pluto Saturn it's a very interesting composition and this is actually the composition that I use for those editing uh, videos that you might have already seen and if not again links down below and somewhere here so I definitely encourage you to check out those videos. And the last thing that can rain on our parade if you want to go to shoot the night sky is the thing that makes rain which is the clouds obviously. If there is a cloudy night then we cannot do anything about it and there is no recipe in order to predict the weather that there will be many days in advance. So the best thing you can do is just, you know, be aware of the days that are good enough in case of moon phases etc to shoot the night sky and just keep an eye on the weather and if the weather is supposed to be good just check the weather on the day you go because you don't want to drive hundreds of kilometers just to see that the entire sky is covered by clouds and if the weather is good you can you can go and you're good to go you can start shooting so this basically sums up the first part of this video. In the next video, I'm going to talk about camera settings, what kind of camera settings exactly to use, how to focus on the stars, because it's a little bit tricky. You cannot use autofocus. And I'm going to talk about camera settings. I'm going to talk about everything you need to know in order to set up for post-production. So I can highly recommend you check out the second part of this video. It should be out within one or two weeks. But that's it for today. If you like this video, hit the like button down below. It really makes a difference. Also, consider subscribing to the channel because there will be more videos like this. I usually make photography tutorials, filmmaking tutorials, drone flying tutorials, and sometimes travel videos or vlogs. So if you are interested in any of that, you know what to do. I upload new content every single week. And like I said, the second part is coming up. So definitely consider subscribing to the channel if you don't want to miss out on that. But that's it for now. Have a good day. See you next time and bye bye.